covered the ascending track uh, today we are going to start the descending track it's uh, going to be a little bit uh, hygienic because uh, it's mixed type we are also discussing the pyramidal as well as the extra pyramidal track so so your focus is important so you know better the difference between the the nerves nerves and the your track track are inside the cns nerve are outside the cns and the nuclei are inside the cns collection of cell bodies and collection of cell body outside the cns are the ganglia so the ascending track will send their signal into their corresponding uh, the cortical area so we name them the spino cortical so uh, end with the cortical so the pathway which are coming from the cortex and coming back to the uh, your spinal cord cortico spinal cortico bulbar so they depend so the pyramidal tract actually start from your cortex and your extra pyramidal tract start from the subcortical area so the sensory these are ascending tract and they come back with the descending which is associated with your motor function so you know whether this is cerebral hemisphere the diencephalon and the brain setting so every, the fiber which are have to ascend so they have to cross this pathway and the fiber they have to descend so they cross all this pathway so keep in mind you know whether central sulcus separate the your the motor and sensory part and uh, you this two and here is central segment and something in front is the precentral cerebellum which is associated with your motor, motor area and your uh, the post central post central is with the sensory so we call them precentral cerebellum primary motor cortex and the post central sensory we call them the primary somato sensory area so so this is actually uh, the spinal cord if you look at your spinal cord this part we already covered so let's look at the motor pathway so you know better this is your uh, the posterior column is mainly pure sensory these the lateral and anterior they are mixed type so some sensory as well as your motor pathways are involved so let's look from number 6 so this number 6 is your little cortical spinal tract so they move here so and you are the interior cortical spinal so they are present on the interior column this is in the lateral column so these are actually your pyramidal tract so while other this eight number rubro spinal uh, which is coming from uh, red nuclei and you are uh, the lateral reticulo and the medial reticulo spinal tract so all these tract are vestibular spinal or the tecto spinal so we have to discuss all these pathways in today's lecture and these are your extra pyramidal so this is all about the white column if you look at them they are concerned with the gray so gray the interior horn is associated with your motor function so interior horn is the posterior with the sensory and the interior with, with the motor. motor so there are different nuclei sensory as well. these are sensory nuclei these are for the your uh, the autonomic and here you are uh, the so these are your center and lateral so these center black one they are associated with your trunk axon and the neck of and head of the body and the lateral one they are associated with your limbs mainly your lower limb and distal part of body so just remember the ventromedial and dorsomedial nucleus is associated with your central part your trunk head neck so these if the uh, the motor pathway if we have to send the signal in this area motor function to control so use this nucleus for example lateral cortical spinal if they have to control the the central part so they are sent like this different fiber are coming here so they form this uh, uh, here is little and they enter into this and then go go to the concerned muscle so these are nucleus so another important thing you know better the Uh, the sensory pathway the your cutaneous uh, fasciculus cutaneous is associated with your sensory pathway lower or upper limb cutaneous upper, upper limb so cutaneous is upper limb so you can say and your uh, the fasciculus gracilis is lower. with lower limb so you can see the 
the uh, medial, so the, your lower part of body, your sacral or lumbar, they are on medial aspect. While your cervical, thoracic, they are on the later. But in the motor, there is out in the opposite. You can see the sacral is on the outer margin, and your lumbar is uh, outer. So and your cervical is inside inner margin. In this case, cervical is outside. Are you clear? Yes. So there is a topography on these muscles. So fiber. So fiber of your cervical move medially, and your fiber of your sacral move literally. So when you go concern, it's important when uh, there is a uh, injury uh, in the left lecture. So you will see the, if the injury is medially, so they affect the cervical areas. So uh, the track of your cervical and your thoracic, they're not, they're not going to the sacral is safe in. So are you clear with any problem? No. So and the, your flexor move on the upper margin and your on the posterior margin and your uh, the extensor move on the interior margin. So we have to discuss perimedial as well as the extramedial. First we cover the perimedial. So perimedial is actually they are forming a perimeter. Uh, these, these two which you have discussed the, the cortico spinal. So these are actually your perimeter. So they are actually associated with your distal muscle function. For example, this hand movement or your limbs. So distal part of musculature. So while you, uh, for example, I have to write something, so also may uh, these perimeter are helping me, but I need a certain position of my these uh, the bicep, tricep, and the brachialis muscle, different muscle, forearm muscle. So their flexion and extension is controlled by your uh, extra perimeter pathway. So this skill type of movement is controlled by perimeter. While the, the posture is maintained by your extra perimeter pathway. So if you lose the extra perimeter pathway, you lose the posture. If you lose the the cortical subvenal or the perimeter track, you lose the the skilled movement, your purposeful movement. So they are lost. So they are mainly associated with your skilled type of movement. So let's see. So there are actually two types who include cortico spinal pathway and the cortico bulbar. Cortico coming from cortex reaching to the bulbar. So it's easier. So the and your cortico bulbar the coming from cortex and reaching to the brain stem. We call them the cortico bulbar pathway. Those are going to your spinal nerves actually. And these are going to your cranial nerves because you have cranial and spinal nerves. So for controlling the cranial nerve, so your uh, the pathway is the cortico bulbar, and for the spinal nerve is the cortico spinal, mm -hmm. and they are actually regulating the distal musculature in the limb while these uh, the cranial are associated with your head and neck movement. So they are associated with the distal movement especially. So head and neck movement, and if you look at the extra perimeter pathway. So the all other pathway, so these are actually uh, a backup system. So uh, for example, if this is injured, so they help out. So they are actually associated with your position, posture, so different, ensure smooth coordinate, purposeful movement. So actually your signal when coming from the brain, for example, uh, you, uh, if uh, you are sitting here, you are not doing any involuntary movement, why? Because there is continuous inhibition in these, so because the signal are going to basal ganglia and your cerebellum. So your 99% of the sensation are going to brain, but they are discarded. Because this, this guy is continuously in, sending inhibiting signal. So you are not doing involuntary movement. Prevent. So if this is injured, if there is damage, you continue your involuntary movement. And your cerebellum, which is associated with your correction of movement, they, they actually compare the movement you are skilled. So, the, for example, if, if I want to pick this pen, so if the cerebellum is injured, my hand can overshoot or undershoot, cannot reach this point. So, this test, nose, nose hand test, finger test, and your uh, this alternate movement test. So, they are actually controlled by if uh, cerebellum is injured, they cannot do. 
this type of movement. So now first start with the pyramidal track, then go to the uh, the extra pyramidal. So you you already know the cortex and the medulla and the spinal cord actually internal capsule. So precentral gyrus is the, is the center of your motor area, and the nucleus for your upper motor neuron is present in the precentral gyrus, and your lower motor neuron is present in the o center. Sorry, in the your interior have not spinal cord. So the signal you know better. So the precentral. So here is your precentral, and this is your actually interior horn of your spinal cord. So signal are coming from here to here. So this part is your upper motor neuron, and the two term upper motor neuron and lower motor. Lower motor neuron in simple word we can say these nerve, radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, nerve, the sciatic nerve. So all the way in the inner innervation we. Uh, teach in the basic classes is actually we, we are discussing the lower motor neuron, and the, these lower motor neuron has controlled by controlled by the your brain cortex, so the motor area. So there is an other pathway a track track we needed. So that track which is coming from our brain reaching to the interior or uh, the the nucleus of lower motor neuron. So that track is upper motor neuron. In sensory, we use three: first order, second order, third. In here is only two order. So this upper motor neuron have to cross as the so single. In, in the sensory, we have discussed this. Second was crossing at the level of medulla or spinal cord. In this case, this upper motor neuron cross at the level of medulla or in the spinal cord. So you can see one track is crossing at the level of medulla, one is crossing at the level of spinal cord. So this is which is crossing at the level of medulla is your cortico, uh, lateral cortico spinal. So you can see 85% are crossing. Only 15% to 20% are come crossing at the level of spinal cord. So this is your interior cortico spinal. So their action is actually uh, as you move distally, your the control is is under this lateral cortico. As you move well, proximal, so these and this is actually controlled by your interior cortico spinal. So the more distal function is controlled by your lateral cortico spinal, and the proximal is controlled by your the interior cortico spinal tract. So the and your uh, axial muscle contraction and the precise movement and fine movement or subtle type of movement. For example, if you, uh, uh, if you, because uh, to move a body, you need a skill. So that skill is um, attained by the your experience. So to perform that skill is controlled by this corticospinal, so later corticospinal tract. So, so this is your upper motor neuron. Here is your lower motor, lower motor neuron. So, so their decussation is at the level of medulla. And here is the decussation at the level of spinal cord for the interior cortical spinal tract. So actually, this is form, forming your pyramid. So this lateral cortical, uh, the cortical spinal, when they cross, they uh, they form at the mid of your uh, the brain stem, the pyramid shape. So because they are crossing like this, so they are crossing like this, and other fibers are coming right here. So they form a pyramid like shape or triangular shape. We call them the pyramidal. There is no functional name pyramid is actually your shape uh, formed by these pathways. So that's why you name them the pyramidal type. So here is lesion. So you know better if the lesion is at this level, everything is contralateral because the fiber are, are in this side. So if lesion at this point will be ipsilateral contralateral. Ipsilateral. Or if lesion at this point will be contralateral for interior cortical spinal. So for lower motor neuron is always the ipsilateral. So there are actually when the pathway is coming from your I have mentioned they have to cross the brain stem, the thalamus, so inter internal capsule. So some other tract are move side by side. So if there is a lesion in these pathway, descending tract, so they may damage the other tract which are moving side by side. 
So let's see the at different level. So at actually the these fiber which are coming from cortex. So we have discussed the precentral and postcentral. So precentral is your motor and some other other mo uh, so only not uh, you know better the precentral is only precentral gyrus and other motor the front frontal lobe they have the the some supplementary area. So these fiber actually uh, take their origin from three point. So one is your the pre the premotor precentral is your forty percent are coming from here, and your forty percent are coming from those supplementary area, and your twenty percent are coming from sensory pathway. It's a little bit different, but because these pathway are actually affecting your sensory tract somewhat. So internal they and the in the internal capsule because there is interior limb and the posterior limb so they are using interior one half of your posterior limb so here is the nerve which is the general somatic somatic sensory fibers of your the head and neck so these are actually if uh, this is injured so the sensation will last for here and if if you look at the the brain stem what is on the up top midbrain Brain, pons, pons medulla. So in the midbrain, the they are actually using the the cross cerebri, uh, uh, the because cross cerebri which connecting your the brain stem with the, your cerebrum. So the cross cerebri, they are using three half of the cross cerebri. So here a motor nerve is passing medially. So uh, what is function of a motor nerve? Uh, I, I control the extra uh, extra. Uh, ocular muscle. So most of the muscle of your eye are controlled by extra, uh, the oculomotor. If you damage the at this level of your uh, this uh, perimeter tract, so you may affect your okay. symptom of your eye. Okay. Eye muscle movement will be yes. affected. So and if you at the level of pulse, they are using the basilar part because we have three parts: the tegmentum, tectum, and basilar. Basilar, basilar is sitting on the, your circle and your tegmentum and tectum. Tectum is on the posterior side which is uh, on the behind the, your ventricle. So that part is actually considered as the tectum and which is in front is considered as your interior uh, limb or your the tegmentum. So here is in the pulse the nerve is the abducent. What is function of abducent nerve? Uh, abducent nerve uh... Abduction of your uh, eye muscle. Eye. Eye. So it is moving interiorly, and so at the level of medulla, your hypoglossal. Glossal is associated with your tongue. So because they are controlling your muscle of tongue. So if you damage uh, at the medulla level, the perimeter tract, so they may affect you. See the symptom of your tongue muscle movement will be affected. So with sensory hemiplegia, and here you are equilibrium hemiplegia. So and abducent hemiplegia, so hypoglossal okay. hemiplegia. So due to injury at different level, so you will see these symptoms. And other important thing we have discussed the your cervical are moving medially and sacral are moving okay. laterally. But as you move in the internal capsule, this position change. Your cervical come in front, and your sacral go back. So cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal. So they are on the back. So position changes. So cervical, which is moving the your uh, the medially, they are come on the front, and which is on the laterally, they are come on the back. So this is actually cervical. So cervical is so your lower limb or your you can say the sacral they are on the posterior and the cervical are on the right, interior. interior so here you can see these uh, the primary motor area your uh, somatosensory area and your supplementary motor area so these are actually three areas 40 percent are coming from here 40 percent coming from here and 20 percent are coming from here so these are fiber so another important thing is so if you look at the uh, follow the track so they are actually here is diverge at the level of internal capsule they come through that they converge here and then they come down and at the level of pons so they are actually then disperse 
so and this person because they here is your pontine nuclei so they are sending transverse fiber into the cerebellum so these fiber coming right here when they reach these fiber like because they are transverse fiber so when they move at the level of pons this due to this transverse fiber so they disperse here and they again convert at the level of medulla in the form of pyramid so that's why we name the the pyramidal tract so they are actually at the level of converting at here so they are forming a pyramid like shape here so they are crossing at the level of the lateral cross at the level of medulla and the anterior are coming down and crossing at the level of spinal cord so this is actually track and here is your lower motor uh, neuron and here your all thing is the upper motor neuron so an other important thing you need to put, you are ready know the the internal capsule arrangement is cervical is on the anterior yes and the lower and the lower are on the posterior so another clinical important thing is that because here they are using this you can see here leg trunk or face so if you look at the internal curves here is one is the anterior limb one is the posterior limb so you can see posterior limb anterior limb so this point is actually geno they are look like a, a book when you open a book one is one page some pages are here some are here so anterior limb and posterior and the mid of that where they are meeting so this point is actually geno so you can see here the arrangement which is using the anterior posteriorly you are sensory are sensory. present and the motor are here so your face the signal of your motor card so they are the face muscle are present in the level of your feet uh, your geno point so if you damage to the posterior limb so there is no in the, there is no motor losses in the face because they are present in the yeah. geno so because we have damaged the posterior limb so if it is the, uh, the supply of blood supply Uh, stop for the your posterior limb or any damage to posterior limb. Your sensory are gone, your motor are gone, but the motor of your face are intact because they are present in the at the point of geno. So this thing is mentioned here. So posterior limb lesion, face not affected because it is present in the geno point. And and this is what what is showing here. This is a homunculus. This is the arrangement actually. the you are uh, the uh, there is because we need action in the different area for example we need action in the the lower limb so the signal are coming from the medial part and if we need uh, movement of your head or your mouth so they are coming from laterally and the, this arrangement is actually showing the picture uh, according to the Uh, the uh, the varieties of the movement so because we need more movement in the hand in the thumb and in the mouth so that's why here is a larger uh, uh, picture for the the hand hand and mouth so and your lower limb is moving medially so because uh, if there is injury in the medial part so you will lose the lower limb for example uh, you are, if you look at the blood supply the the middle cerebral artery the anterior so middle is going here so if middle cerebral or your sub uh, subdural or uh, such type of the hemorrhage so if you damage the sub uh, the middle cerebral the losses will be uh, the motor function will be lost of your head and neck head and neck hand so but your limb are okay because in this area the blood supply is going is the your anterior cerebral it is coming here and the middle is going here so if damage the anterior you will lose the lower limb if damage the middle cerebral so the loss will be on the this mouth and your hand so the mid, mid uh, lateral part of this so actually it's taken from here so like this so any question no thank you so the Legion we already have covered, so you know better. Uh, and you know uh, if there or uh, there is some stimulatory as well as your inhibitory effect on the uh, lower motor neuron by this upper motor neuron. So actually, your pyramidal are uh, if you lose only pyramidal, you lose the stimulation. 
if you lose the extra parameter you lose the inhibition so but overall if you have because when there is a lesion you lose both pathways paramembrane as well as your extra parameter so that's a overall effect is the inhibition although the, the stimulation by the parameter and the by the extra parameter it's a inhibition but if you look at the both compare both so overall is inhibitory effect so if you lose this upper motor neuron you are actually losing the inhibition so that's why uh, when you lose there is injury in the upper motor neuron the findings are hyperreflexia hypertonia spastic type and the meniscal sign uh, while in the lower motor neuron so they are uh, the hypo reflexia hypotonia and you have uh, no uh, the uh, babiniskin sign is no because uh, there is normal plantar flexion so above the decussation is the contralateral below the decussation the ipsilateral and there is a spastic type of peral uh, uh, paralysis and the hyperreflexia hyperreflexia means if you want to check for example bicep there is a little bit there so more than exa exaggerated reflexes so muscle become overactive no muscle wasting because your lower motor neuron the nerve is okay so facial nerve or your the radial nerve ulnar nerve sciatic nerve any nerves so they because they are supplying innervate okay so there is no muscle wasting but due to disuse because when you lose the upper motor neuron you are losing the volent uh, the voluntary are because you cannot control the muscle action so they are Uh, supposed to take type of uh, rigidity so due to this uh, 20% uh, is the muscle wasting occurs so clasp knife supposedly in the initial like when you some open your uh, the knife there is initial difficulty then easier so same like this so in this type of muscle so initially there is a difficulty but as you uh, move laterally it's okay if you cross the initial inhibition so then it's e easier to the flex uh, the uh, the extend the muscle so in this upper motor neuron type of lesion so the meniscus side in your uh, uh, the toes of what can in the lower motor neuron if the lateral flexor paralysis fasciculation mean your uh, involuntary movement so because uh, lower motor neuron is injured so and the muscle wasting a reflex is no because the lower motor neuron is not going to the muscle so there is muscle wasting and the but then normal plantar flexion because when you uh, move in the babiniskin sign to check so because in the upper motor neuron you have lost the inhibition so they move upward but in this case your upper motor neuron is okay so you are not losing inhibition so that's why in this case in the lower motor neuron layer you will find the uh, the normal plantar flexion so and if you lesion at any level spinal cord at the point of lesion because the findings are the lower motor neuron below that is the upper motor neuron for example at this point if lesion is this point so you are losing this lower motor neuron below that this upper motor neuron are not going so that's why we, uh, our findings are the upper motor neuron below the lesion so uh, the polyvalvulus and warding hoffman is the is the example of lower motor neuron lesion and here is the mixed type of the mi uh, in which you see the both upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron so here you can see if you move like this so in the normal its flexion other if it's uh, the uh, in the meniscus sign in the upper motor neuron near so when you move like this this fine like they move up in normally if i check here there there is no finding out because why because your upper motor neuron is okay if you are injured with the upper uh, the uh, the upper motor neuron so this sign will be positive if you look at the children their babiniskin sign is always positive why are you an idiot so the reason is that uh, uh, because your myelination is not completed until 2 years so uh, when there is it's unmyelinated not completely your corticospinal tract is not completely myelinated until 2 years so when you 
check children uh, under two year the, which has younger than two year so their baby skin sign is positive because they are not completely the corticus of animal little corticus of animal is not completely melanated which is so your distal movement muscle tends so that's why in the children you will find the baby skin sign is normal in the children so you cannot say the hair is upper motor neuron layer because this is common is normal so this is description you can read the your so broad main area so the area of you because there are different broad main area uh, in the cortex so for the different uh, the movements so speech uh, the motor activity sensory activity so each type of sensation are going to specific the uh, broad main area of your cortex so far this uh, the we have discussed the, this pathway they are associated with the area number 4 and 6 and the other thing is mentioned here the alpha and gamma so alpha is actually going to your extrafacial fiber because uh, when you look at the muscle there is some uh, the fiber which are on outside some other fiber which are present inside those we call them the interfacial so they are actually innervated by gamma and the extra innervated by alpha we will discuss the detail of this in the physiology but just remember here so now uh, now come to the extra pyramidal it's a very tricky type of the extra pyramidal tract but uh, the uh, the picture which is coming in front are the schematic type so if you follow this picture you will understand the uh, the the difficult concept of extra pyramidal pathway so a lot of children are confused so just so this is cortex so and here is what thalamus is it so and here is actually showing the basal, basal ganglia and here is what cerebellum and uh, this is right and left division so here is the actual spinal cord this is part is showing your spinal cord so mid brain pons and medulla so this is brain stem level so now look at the rubro spinal tract so actually in, in these terms in the medical term so for the red we use word rubro so it's actually the tract which are coming from the red nucleus going to the spinal cord we call them the rubro spinal it's a red for red color so let's see what is the location of red so can you see here in the mid brain level so they are actually in the present in the tegmentum tegmentum is what tectum is the posterior the tegmentum is the interior and the third is the basal which is, is resting on the skull that part so actually two part Uh, are in front of your ventricle so the middle one is the so if you look at this so here is for example the ventricle so the part which is behind the ventricle is the tectum this middle is the tegmentum this is your basal actually so there is arrangement of this so they are present in the tegmentum part in this part and you are the colliculus superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus they are present in the tectum part so So the tract, can you see here? So this is tract coming from the red nucleus, reaching to the spinal cord. They are moving in the lateral interior. In which color? Can you see? Here? Yeah, interior. Lateral. So here is lateral. Here is interior. So they are moving in the lateral column, and then go to the nucleus, which is present in the interior half of gray matter. So can you see the crossing is just uh, just below the They, as they come out and they cross on the opposite side so they move and in the lateral white column so so they are actually controlled by your the different so by the cortex and by the your cerebellum so uh, they because of they facilitate actually your flexor muscle and inhibit the extensor so there is confusion in which one is the, because i have mentioned the extra pyramidal are controlling your posture by controlling these flexion and extension 
So just remember the pathway which are present here in level of pons. So they are actually uh, facilitating your extension muscle. The pathway which are oh, I am mentioning in the midbrain or in the medulla. So they are all are facilitating the flexor. So this is present in the midbrain or pons. In the midbrain. So they facilitate flexor. If I am saying the facilitate the flexor means inhibiting the extensor. So this is your the rubro and other pathway which are coming from the, the tectum of. So there is superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. What are the function of superior colliculus and what is the importance of the inferior colliculus? So actually it's uh, the, uh, the track visual. So visual are associated with your superior colliculus and the reflex pathway and your the auditory are associated with your inferior. I already mentioned so just for mnemonic yes. just move like that your eye are on the upper. So superior are associated with your visual and your the auditory are with the inferior colliculus. So just see it is actually this is tegmentum part. So if you go back because the level of the red nucleus and the superior colliculus is same. They are at the same level. But one is present in the tectum. The red nucleus is present in the tegmentum. So that's why I am removing this uh, red nucleus to see, to look at the, your superior follicular. So this is your superior follicular. Red nucleus is present in the tegmentum and the superior follicular is present in the tectum. So let's see. So this is your superior one is the inferior follicular. So can you see track is crossing? Just here, cross and move in the little interior. This is moving in the little. This is in the, this is interior part. You know yeah, yeah. So in the interior interior column of your uh, spinal cord. So here is mentioned the interior white column. So while this is in the little column. So the your uh, is the superior colliculus is with the visual reflexes. So and the auditory is uh, with the inferior colliculus. So this is coming from midbrain. So they facilitate the flexor and inhibit the extensor. So facilitate the flexor is not mentioned. So just remember. So there is facilitate the flexor in the midbrain in the medulla. The tract in the extrapyramidal mostly we are discussing. So only the pons are packs. So they are actually uh, the associated with the extensor. Pons are extensor. Pons are extensor. So the pathways are coming from the pons. They are the uh, facilitated the extensor. So another important thing is that uh, so here is mentioning it is close to medial longitudinal and fascicular. It's very important also because there is not much detail here. So it is actually a connection between your eyes, ear and the neck. So for example, I listen something on the back, some horrible sound. So my eyes and my neck both are moved back because of this medial longitudinal pathway. So means your, uh, this is actually the nerve which supplies your ear. What is the name of that nerve? Vestibular cochlear nerve. So this is actually connection between the your vestibular cochlear and the nerve of the eye are what? Oculomotor, obducent, the trochlear. So th those nerves which are controlling your eye muscle. So this is actually connection between the your vestibular cochlear, oculomotor, obducent, trochlear and the, the nerve which supply your neck muscle or your uh, the, in the face or facial and your the vagus, the your accessory, accessory the spinal and you are the hypoglossum in your controlling. So these, these are actually connected. That's why by this pathway, the medial longitudinal fascicular. So that's why when we something here on the back, we suddenly move back. So our eyes move, our neck move. So here is mentioned the vestibular cochlea, ear nerve is associated with your extra ocular muscle which is 3, 4 and 6 and the neck muscle 7, 
10, 11, and 12 create your nerves. That is good. Yes. So, and your oligosapinal tract, uh, it's not uh, much important. So, but just look at the where it is position. Actually, it's coming from the olivary nucleus. So, where is so? Can you see here and the level of medulla? So, this olive is present there. So, they are crossing just here and so their function is actually unknown type of function. So, so they are moving in the little white color. You can see. And you are only we tectospinal are moving in the interior white color. Both are moving in the little white color. So in the other path, let's look at in the next picture. So cortex, what is this? Thalamus, basal ganglia. Mm -hmm. Here is what cerebellum, right and left division, spinal cord, midbrain, pons, medulla, red nucleus. So now let's look at the ret reticulospinal. Actually, the concept is that the you are in the brain stem in the your brain region above the spinal cord when you move. So only your nucleus except this location of nucleus and the tract. Except the nucleus, is, there are not neurons are present dispersely. So this dispersed type of a net-like type of the, the fibers which are present in the brain throughout the in the your brain stem. So this net actually gives some pathway. So this net uh, for net we use term reticular. So the fiber which are coming from these reticular going back to the spinal we name them the reticulo spinal. So they, these are actually, some are present in the pond, some are present in the medulla. Pond are associated with your extensor and the medulla and midbrain are associated with your flexor yes. pathways. So let's look at it. So reticulospinal tract. So can you see here one pathway is present in the pons. So the, these fibers are your pontine reticulospinal tract. So, and the other nucleus can you see if you see here, so at the level of medulla, can you see here, which one is little, which one is medium? Medulla, medulla is the little one and the pounds are the medium. medium and the other, so because some fiber are crossing, some are not, some move ipsilaterally, some move contralaterally, so but you can see they are moving in the little column, so Little, little medulla moving in the little way column and they facilitate the facilitate, uh, facilitate the flexor muscle flexor because they are the medulla and the pontine will uh, facilitate the mm -hmm. extensor so only pons are the so here the, the extensor they are moving but the, the pons are moving in the interior weight column so, and facilitate the extensor muscle tone. So, so, these are actually, if you look at, if we already mentioned the uh, rubrospinal, which is controlling the, facilitate the flexor also. So, this medulla is actually connected, and there is connection between these rubrospinal and also and the red nucleus and also control over the, this medulla because both have same function. So, hello, I am also flexing. You are also connected. Now, join the party. So, they are actually, there is connection here. And these are controlled by cortex, the cortical pathway which are coming. So, both are controlled by your cortex. So, the other, uh, they are also controlled by these because the function, the coordination is controlled by the cerebellum. So, so cerebellum have control over these nucleus. So, you can see, so these are actually controlling. So, in other, uh, the substantia gelatinosa, so they are refined nucleus which is present in the midline, so which is not shown here, but just remember in the present, so there is send uh, release. So, something that is the, the serotonin. So, they are actually, you will suppress the pain. So you can compensate the pain, so they suppress the pain sensation. So th this is actually happening. Now, 
look at the vestibular spinal so vestibular spinal mean vestibular mean what vestibular mean basically mean your ear ear so the tract which are associated with your ear so they are vestibular so there is a complex present in the brain cell superior mid uh, the middle lateral and the inferior if you mention superior middle lateral is it now put in the brain cell superior middle and, and the lateral and the, so if you look at the lateral is present in the pons and the medial is present in the medulla and because they are in, in if you location if you later will if you can identify uh, i will be thankful to you so now so they are actually controlled by your vestibular and your cerebellum so these are actually vestibular spinal tract so let's see so one is coming from the medulla and the other is tract if you look at can you see here so medulla and the actually these are actually sending the signal the lateral and the medial uh, don't confuse with the superior and inferior so lateral which one is the uh, the lateral which one is the medial medial is the medial lateral is the lateral is <laughs> here so the the coming from lateral or the lateral you can see here so they are moving laterally and the coming from the medial or the medial so which is coming from the medial medial is present in the medulla and then medial is present in the medulla so they facilitate what flexor action sir flexor and the lateral is present in the pons so they facilitate the extensor so lateral pons moving in the interior right column and if you see here so they are moving in the interior right column so facilitate the extensor muscle and while the maintain the posture and the equilibrium because uh, your balance is controlled by three things actually when balance uh, through the body are actually vision vestibular pathway and proprioception dorsal column so at the at a uh, at a time we have two if two are okay we can balance so if i am closing both my vestibular and proper reception both are working so i can balance so in case of other condition if you have one pathway in any condition so you will lose balance if you are injury in the dorsal column or if you have vestibular two pathway any time if you have close so that's where we lose balance okay so they are actually maintaining the your posture and the equilibrium you know better and the medial is in the interior column and in here the so flexor actually facilitate the flexor facilitate the flexor and here the extensor so are you clear with so good yes. so another idea is that uh, so these are actually pathway which i mentioned so there is no separate pathway something and some say they are actually also going the symp sympathetic uh, your sympathetic and parasympathetic are going so we we have almost covered the, the your extra pyramidal pathway one important thing if you follow me the hypothalamus can you see here the here is the the dense plan where hypothalamus is present so there is actually a lesion hardness center which is very important so actually i am discussing going to this so tag are coming from here and going to the your lateral uh, lateral heart because lateral heart is associated with your sympathetic and the parasympathetic so these hypothalamus spinal tract so it is under the control of your hypothalamus so they are actually controlling this so they influence your preganglia and the interior medial lateral cell and uh, uh, the preganglia sacral L, sacral and craniosacral are parasympathetic and the thoraco uh, thoraco lumbar are sympathetic. sympathetic so they are actually controlling this so if you lean in the above the t1 level above the t level so because uh, above the t1 we have no That's sympathetic because t in the cervical we have no sympathetic or parasympathetic so in the cervical region for example in the eyes if you lose if a lesion above the t1 we see this condition that is harner syndrome 
because we have associated with the eye muscle, uh, the findings are associated with your eye finding because they are uh, taking signal from the superior ganglia, so that's why we find some findings. So, mnemonic is it's, uh, also it's difficult to memorize the, their findings, so just remember this sample, mnemonic is sample. So, let's see. S represent your sympathetic nerve fiber. A represent anhydrosis. M represent meiosis. T, P represent cryptosis. So let's see. First part. Sympathetic nerve fiber, you know better we have lost. It is just remember to harm the center. Anhydrosis means what? It's actually lack of sweating in the face area. Mm -hmm. So anhydrosis of your face. And meiosis is actually constriction of your pupil. Because so constriction and the relaxation are two functions. So we'll, if you see here, so there is constriction of uh, the your pupil in the eye. And the other thing is the cryptosis, dropping of upper eyelid. If you see here, upper eyelid and your loss of serious subpena reflex and the enophthalmus. Enophthalmus means your eye is sunk in the back. If you see here the Harner syndrome, so these are fading. So, and here is the last one for the feedback pathway, which is controlling here. So, here is cerebral cortex if you use a move fast or faster. So, here is the actually pentaniculus, here is your uh, the dentate nucleus in the cerebellum. So, if you see here, so it is actually under the inhibition of Purkinje cell fiber. So the fiber which is coming from cortex reaching into the pen type, we name them the corticopentine fibers. And the fiber which is coming from, so some fiber which are going to spin a little, name them the corticospinal, corticopentine, coming from cortex to pen type. And the, these fiber which are coming from pentain going to the cerebellum, name them the pantocerebral. So these are efferent. Now see the efferent pathway. So, because they are sending signal to the cerebellum and give feedback by the cerebellum to control the movement. So, here is actually, so these are actually cerebellum uh, dento because they are coming from dento, dentus nucleus, so dento uh, thalamic fibers. And they, they are going back to the cortex, so we name them thalamo cortical. So, just remember the efferent are the corticopentide and the Panto cerebral pathway and the efferent yeah, have the dentothalamic and the thalamocortical pathway. So, let's see this. Uh, so, let's see the this our the last summary table, which is actually your uh, billion dollar type of. Picture. So, because all the pathways are coming in the in the right here. So, cortex, thalamus, and here you are the midbrain, pons, medulla, and cerebellum. So, so these are what your follicles. Here is and su superior, middle, inferior. The spinal cord. So, uh, all of them here is actually showing the uh, the level of different body parts of the or the cervical which are 8 in number and the thoracic are 12 nerves and your lumbar are 5 and sacral are 5 and the coccyx is 1. So let's see the, so this is what, can you see if you look at the midbrain in the tectum you know better what is present, your superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. So the pathways are coming from superior inferior colliculus, we name them the ectosapenal and so with the visual and the auditory. Superior is the visual, yeah. inferior with the auditory. Yeah. And the other pathway, if you look at here, if you see here, one is crossing at the medulla. This is what rear corticospinal, and which is crossing at the level of spinal cord is the interior corticospinal pathway. So it should be the distal muscle movement, and the your interior is with the little bit proximal muscle movement. So corticospinal and rapid circular voluntary type of movement. And now let's look at this, it is actually showing you are a vestibular complex, which you know better, superior, middle, inferior, and the lateral. So, vestibular complex. One is coming from the pons liver, this is the pontine, 
and the other is coming from the medulla is the vestibular and the so the which is coming in the pons facilitate the flexor which is present in the medulla facilitate the uh, in the medulla facilitate the flexor and in the pons facilitate the extensor so and these are actually showing your the one uh, if you look back so here is actually the the reticular one is the, in the pons uh, one is present in the medulla so coming from pons in the the uh, the pontine one is the coming from medulla or the so reticulospinal pontine and reticulospinal medullary so they are actually the uh, involuntary movement and reflex type of movement especially and the if you look at the so this is red nucleus which is present in the midbrain so is what the rubrospinal type so if you look at their crossing here which facilitate the flexor because they present in the midbrain and and here is your ulnar inferior ulnar so facilitate the flexor and the other descending and the visceral activity so it's a, it's conclusion of our all the lecture so thank you very much